Hello everyone, my name is Kushbu and I welcome to you all in this big data series. So in this video particularly, we will be looking about this Hadoop 1.x architecture. In the previous video, we already have seen about what is big data, what is Hadoop, what is the feature of Hadoop, what is the history of Hadoop. Now here, we will be majorly focusing on Hadoop 1.x architecture. Going forward, we'll also cover Hadoop 2.x architecture as well as Hadoop 3.x architecture. So, the first thing you need to understand here, why Hadoop came into existence. So, what happened that the data that were being generated was of huge volume, high variety, high velocity, as well as veracity and value. So to store those kind of data, there was a need of something. At that point of time, this Hadoop came into existence to store that huge big data. And that's where this Hadoop 1.x architecture is going to solve that particular problem. So the figure that you are seeing here on the screen is the architecture of Hadoop 1.x. These all are the components that is present inside the Hadoop 1.x architecture. We will be discussing here about each one of the component one by one. What is the roles and responsibility of each of the component? So see here, I'll be taking one example by which you will be able to understand very easily. So suppose I have a file of 1000 MB, all right, I have a file of 1000 MB and I have to store this in Hadoop 1.x. So to store that particular file, I'll not go and dump that file directly. Instead, there is some criteria and steps involved. So at that time, the people were there who were designing this Hadoop 1.x architecture. They said that in this architecture, there should be someone who needs to take care of all the component, right? So there should be some master node, okay? So at first place, this master node came into existence. Also, this master node is called as name node. I have written here the short form. This is also called as name node all right now after name node there is job tracker this job tracker is stands for jt as well i'll be writing here the full form this is nothing but job tracker after job tracker there is slave node which is also called as data node this is also called as data node in Hadoop 1.x architecture, there could be only one master node and there could be multiple slave node. Now with each data node, there is something called as task tracker is connected. Okay, this is nothing but task tracker. So with each data node, you can see here one task tracker is attached. So for the first data nodes, this is task tracker 1. This is task tracker 2, 3, 4 and 5 in a similar manner. Now let's understand the roles and responsibility of each of the component. I have took the example here that I have 1000 MB of data and I need to store in this particular Hadoop 1.x. So this 1000 MB of data will first go here at the master node. Now, whatever kind of file that will come to this architecture will first have to go through master node in order to go inside this architecture. This master node will decide that whether I should move forward this particular file or not. So this master node will check the type of this file. Also meanwhile, this master node will check that what is the availability of my data node? Is there any kind of storage present? Is the bandwidth present in the data node or not? So in total, there is two responsibility of master node or name node. The first one is to check the type and size of the file that is coming in this system. After that, meanwhile, it also checks about the storage availability or bandwidth availability of this data node. So in general, this master node or name node stores the metadata. Okay, what it stores? 
it stores the metadata now what does it mean by metadata data of data all right this name node doesn't store the actual information or real information the actual information or real information is stored by this data node so this data node is responsible for storing real information all right real information means this particular file will go in this system and will be processed where in the data node and this data node is also called as worker node or slave node i'll be writing here this data node is also called as worker node or slave node so here this is clear that what kind of information master day uh, master node that is name node stores this stores metadata that is data of data what is the type of the data what is the size of the data what is the availability of this data node what is the bandwidth or stories of this data node and the actual information is stored by this data node all right also this master node is responsible for remembering the type of the data that is going to be stored in each of this data node means this particular data when it will go through the system it will just get divided into chunks of data and will be stored in these all data node so in which data node what kind of file is stored and what is the size of the file these all things will be remembered by which one this master node this master node will remember each of those things that is also called as memory mapping now once this master node or name node understands that what is the type and size of this particular data what is the availability of my data nodes this will divide this file into chunks of data means each data will be consisted of 128 mb 128 mb so this is the size of the chunk of file in which it will divide this 1000 mb of data and after that it will pass this data to the job tracker now this job tracker will come into picture let's understand what is the responsibility of this job tracker actually this job tracker is aware about the each of the data node means which data node is available and which data node is not available so after getting this chunk of file this job tracker is going to ask to each of the data node that which of the data node is available so this can be understood with the help of an example suppose in a company there is manager right at top there is manager after that there comes the team lead all right and under team lead there are team members so what happens that if certain work comes into manager hand it asks all the team lead that which of the team lead is available so in case let's say three of the team lead rewards or four of the team lead rewarded back so this manager will actually uh, like try to understand that is this team lead really available or not right so this architecture is similar to this master slave architecture of hadoop 1.x suppose this job tracker is nothing but manager all right this is nothing but manager and this is going to ask to each of the data node all right each of the data node that which of the data node is available means are you available this is asking to the data node suppose let's say this first data node third data node fourth data node and fifth data node rewarded back so after that it will try to check that the data node that has rewarded is it actually available is the storage available in all these data node is it uh, like do it supports the required bandwidth for the storage is hard disk full or not so all these things this job tracker is going to check so if in case these all requirements will not get fulfilled by let's say this fourth 
data node so in that case it is going to reject this request right and after that maybe it will just assign this chunk of data to let's say data node 1 data node 3 and data node 5 means four of the data node rewarded and out of that one data node request got cancelled and after that this request uh, like given by data node 1 3 and 5 got accepted so this file chunk of file will be given to which one data node 1 data node 3 and data node 5 so these all data node will try to process or will try to store this chunk of file let's say this data node 3 got 128 mb of file so what it will try to do it will try to store this data by processing it right as i said earlier that this data node is responsible for storing this real information so this is how this real information is stored inside this data node so while storing this data this particular data node will keep on sending a heartbeat signal to this job tracker so it actually sends the signal called as heartbeat all right so this signal called as heartbeat why this signal is sent by the end of data node so that this job tracker could be aware that this data node is alive what happens sometimes that it might happen that system get crashes right so in order to know that this data node is active and it is just storing this data so it is responsible to send the heartbeat signal so this heartbeat signal is sent to the task tracker and task tracker sends this heartbeat signal to the job tracker so the respective heartbeat signal to the respective task tracker and this particular task tracker attached to this data node will send back this signal to the job tracker once the file is completely stored the final signal is sent to the job tracker that yeah i have successfully stored this particular chunk of data so this data so in total this job tracker is also responsible for maintaining two things the first is to allocate the task to these all data node and the second to keep track of the status of the work like is this particular mb of file is getting properly stored in this data node or not also one more thing this job tracker and the task tracker does almost the same thing but the difference is that this job tracker is responsible to keep track of all the data node while this task tracker is responsible for keeping the track of this single data node means this first task tracker is only responsible to track the particular data node that is data node 1 this task tracker 2 is responsible for keeping the track of this data node 2 all right this is responsible for keeping only the track of data node 1 and this is only responsible for keeping the track of data node 2 so by this way entire chunk of file gets stored in this data node and after all the files have been stored the signal is sent to the job tracker and again in return this job tracker sends this signal to the master node but it cannot send each and every time all the signal to master node directly that is name node directly so in between there comes the concept of secondary name node secondary name node i'll be discussing about the concept of secondary name node in the next video also with secondary name node i'll be discussing about the concepts of fs images which is very very important with respect to the hadoop so if you haven't subscribed this channel so please subscribe to get the latest videos of this channel I hope you understood about the architecture of Adobe 1.x. If you have any kind of confusion, you can just ping in the comment section. I'll be happy to reply. Till then, keep learning and stay tuned for getting the latest videos. Thank you so much.